Hello, it's Sarah, and I had to come to you tonight because I have been working on these little dragon's eyes. Um, of course, I was looking at some videos last night on YouTube, and I saw other people's dragon's eyes that they made. And so what I did when I got up today was I pulled some bezels, and I've had these... When I was doing the applique, I have all these different shapes and sizes. I didn't do any of these yet. I didn't try a heart yet. I have a couple. I did this size. This is my last one of these because I did three of these. And I have, I've been trying different techniques for the eye because this was um, <clears throat> the class that I took um, on claylessons.com and it was uh, Christine Capono is the artist who did the tutorial for this one but you know since then like I said um, I'm sorry I did my nails today but I patina just gets all over me um so yeah they're looking kind of grungy uh, Chris um, I'm sorry Lynn's Crafts Lynn uh, she does her eyes a little differently and then you know there's a couple other people that do them even a little different than that so I think I'm going to be able to put my own spin on it uh, so I want to show you what I did I did the first one I did was this one and I like it it's obviously just a little bit of a small opening like I really think this one came out great like proportionately it came out really well for a first try um, and I don't know if that had to do with you know the base and everything and just following the directions but when I did this one it just look how high it stands up I mean that's a good half an inch um, but I like it but I do I so I wanted to try so that was the first one I did then this was the second and you can tell I have much more of an opening for my eye but I have a much lower profile so this is probably just over a quarter of an inch um, I also didn't fill the bail before or the the I guess this is a bail yeah with clay for this one I think I like smushed in after and stuff so I was trying different things with that um, and I did different color because like this was I just pulled gold and bronze and all my um, metallic -y colors browns and stuff because I wanted to use the green for the leaves so that they definitely popped I mean I love how he looks um, with just all the greens and I think that's a great look but I definitely wanted to try it with a more mixed color so that's one two then this is the third one of that size and I think I got it on the third one because the eye is open it's still it's not as high as the first one but it still has some good height I think it's proportionate like it just looks good. I changed the leaves and did them my own way because um, Chris's class had the heart shaped leaves. That was her in her class. So on these two I started making, well this one I have a heart shaped leaf. This I just started making my own color leaves. Um, let me just, I see some uh, ink of gold on the glass and that comes right off. I also tried some of my um, other um, mica powders to, to use to color the clay behind the eye. That's what I used to color these. So this is like a yellow mica powder. This was like a greenish yellow, but the eye is so small. Like it's so funny like that. It's so thick this one. It's so cool. Um, I, I really love them all. But I really like this one too because I just like the shape of the eye. Like it has that nice corner and everything. I don't know. I just really like that one. So those were the three that I did. Like I think the eyelids just, I started getting the hang of it. 
um, I just got my lids going. Like this one has definitely more room to work. So you get to see that this is the inner part of the eyelids and then there's this is like the body of the, this is his face. Um, but then I did this square one, which I really love. I'll zoom in. This is pretty proportionate for um, the size bezel. And I want to say some of these I got online in Etsy stores. And you just put in um, bezel, silver bezels or whatever. Um, there were some of them I did get at Hobby Lobby, definitely. I think this particular one I got at Hobby Lobby, these square ones. Um, I like this one a lot. I think this one's pretty cool. And see how I started, now I started painting the pupils on to the back of the, um, the little glass gem, which that is just a basic white. Like this is just a white glass, oh, excuse me, I'm so zoomed in. And that could be used for a pupil. I was trying all different shapes, like just a straight line. Um, this one is a little more of like a, a diamond shape. This one's kind of like a straight line with like almost like a diamond in the middle of the straight line. And that's like a fat dime, a fat diamond, but you can't even see because I covered up so much of it. So this is my first one. And then I started getting the hang of it, like how much room you want to uh, leave on the um, glass. Although this one's looking pretty, this one is a round bezel. Now I didn't pop this one out yet. It's staying in there pretty good. But all, and this one actually I didn't have to pop out either. But all the big ones, after they baked, I popped them out of the bezels and glued them in with glossy accents. Um, so they're very secure now. Um, but yeah, so this guy is squinting. And this color clay, you can't really even tell what color it was because I put um, my Violet Inca Gold on the background. I put it because I put a couple of little applique flowers. So I think that I'm going to do another. I think this last big one I do, I want to do some more applique. I think I'm going to do it with more of an applique vine around it so um and i was just playing with the different colors of inca gold and i don't know i just wanted to change it up a little bit with color and then i'll have to show you my fave because this is super cute so that i did that and then this is my last one this is a little mini um altoids tin so this wasn't an Altoids tin. That's the name I was trying to come up with last night. But these are just tins that you can order online too. I forget the name of this, the shop. And by the way, I usually do put in the description below. And sometimes you have to touch the little arrow where it says show more or something to make it drop down. But in yesterday's video about Polymer Clay Adventure, I had like three different um, uh, links in the description box so um because you guys were asking did i have the links and they're right in there so you just have to hit um the drop down for um the links but anyway um so this is just a little altoids tin this is an actual assay you can see it says altoids in there but or smalls that says smalls but anyway it, i'm pretty sure it's a little Altoids tin. So look how much smaller, but that's like the Papa and the Baby. I love it. I think it turned out cool. On this one, I used a cool mica powder that's like a yellow green. And then I did the pupil a little bit more of um, the more diamond shape. And I think I just got the, I started to figure out the perfect balance, the, per the perfect height that you want to bring it up. Um, I got the, the eye open and kind of in a shape. I have my um, eyelids in such a shape that like, you know, uh, when you patina, sometimes the paint gets in the, in the nooks and crannies of the, of the glass gem and you just have to wipe it away. 
Um, but like I have the second layer there. I think the smaller ones, it's harder to show this detail, which I like, the second layer of eyelid. So um, it is fun to make them um, bigger. And this is the size that um, Krista Capono's class taught because she said it's, it should be like two by three. So this is approximately three and it's just a little under two. But I mean, I pretty much followed her directions. Um, but this one, I just winged it and I just love it. I think it turned out so cute. Um, I probably could do a tutorial for this. Um, because I'm going to change it up. I'm going to do, um, like I said, some applique. i um, going to be doing the eye a bit different. Um, we'll see. And because I am, I'm loving them. Um, I just think I'm really kind of wanting to, look, I got a crack here because I think I'm trying to, like, it's not going to come off because I glued it. I am, I glued it with glossy accents. I just take a little bit and kind of rub it with my finger and get it flat and then put my clay on after I made the marks. And these marks are from um, this texture sheet that just says, uh, I can't see what it says. It doesn't have a name, this one. It's by Makin's, Makin's Clay. Um, and it's just like a scaly one, like a fish one. But this, I think there was an air bubble. And um, maybe I tried to pop it, but I didn't notice that it was not sealed well enough or something. I don't know. Um, I just love them, guys. They're so cool. Uh, so this is, it goes this way. And I just put little balls of clay around the vines to give more texture. I told you I used my etch and pearl tool to make the little um, scale marks. I like it though. And perfect pearls and all my um, Inca golds and rub it on there so that's it. I'm going to zoom back out. But I have been a busy girl today. See that's what happens. That's when I when I get inspired I go like my back hurts. <laughs> because I've been sitting here way too long doing these but I have these three and then these two I don't think I have any more in the oven no I just went and took this one out which I'm not sure I just wish his eye was more open but it's a darker one this is still cool but his eye isn't open enough these two are good like this one just I don't know I really love this one these three are my faves, although I really like this one too. This is my favorite small one. I love the colors too, like that, I think that's a bronze. All right, I'm just talking a lot. I'll zoom in a little bit more. All right, so that's my dragon's eyes. And then I was looking at more um, fairy doors because these are just right up that alley, like with the fantasy of it. Isn't this adorable though? I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Enough gushing, Sarah. They're, they're all my babies right now. All right. Thanks for watching.